Good day, everybody. Nikki Brown here. No matter where you are, what part of the world you are in, I hope that you are having a good day. So, we're going to do part two. Um, and this part for the Satan is washing the wheat. So, um, as you may recall me saying, I was going to soak my Satan overnight. And this is what it looks like. I can see a lot of the starch at the bottom of the bowl. Um, if you don't want to run it, a lot of people wash it under running water, but if you don't want to use tap water, um, just be prepared with about one to two gallons of water. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this process started. water and basically just pressing some more of that starch out. And you can see the water turning really really cloudy. until it pretty much turns clear. It's starting to change the more you wash it and you get the starch out.
Now because I started out making bread, I didn't follow the recipe exactly, so I probably should have put maybe at least a half a cup more of water um, to start, but it's okay. back into it. Casual cheese. <laughs> Put this back in. And you can see the water starting to get a little clearer. I think this may be my last wash, or maybe we'll do one more. Stop there because it's pretty clear now. Okay, so now 
Want to stretch it. Um, the more you stretch it out and play around with it, the more of a meat like texture it will become. Again, I started out with a bread recipe, so it may turn out a little different. <laughs> but you want to get it to be firm so that um, it doesn't become doughy when you boil it. Because you have to put your, you have to make like a brine or a broth. And you want it to be good and tight. And normally you would braid this, but mine is falling apart. And I think that's, again, because uh, I started out with a bread recipe. Um, so normally you would flatten it out and braid it and then put it in a knot. Um, and as I do this, it's just kind of coming apart, so I don't think I will be able to do that. So... I think though, I think this is still going to work though. I have another idea.
thought I pressed pause. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Okay. So in the water, I'm going to put some garlic seasoning. I, that was Cajun seasoning. I was thinking garlic and putting Cajun in the water. <laughs> This is garlic, a little cayenne pepper, that's finished, a little white pepper, salt <laughs> so cumin <laughs> oh goodness and I think I want to add a little bit of fennel seeds in there too why not So since I can't make it a braid, I'm going to put it in one of these tea bags. did pretty much uh, I lost a, I lost a little bit <laughs> but hopefully this will stop it from turning doughy and puffing up too much um, we can make another batch but just want to see what the texture turns out like at this point <laughs> I'm actually going to let that come up to a boil and then I'll add it. So I'll be back. Okay, it's, it's not quite boiling, but it's hot enough. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. Because um, it's about to start boiling. And I'm going to let that cook for about an hour, allowing that seitan to get those spices in there good. And then I will come back and check it to see what we have. I turned the fire up high to get it to boil faster and put the lid on it. Um, but now I'm going to turn the fire down. And like I said, let it pretty much go boil for about an hour. Um, it's pretty much starting to boil now. It's cast iron. Um, it holds heat pretty well, so um, a lot of times I will turn the fire up a little high um, just to get it to boil faster. So as you can see, it is starting to boil. going to turn the fire down now <laughs> I just wanted to cut it to come to like a rolling boil as they say okay perfect 
And now, I'm going to turn the fire down and let it go for about 50 minutes to an hour. And then we'll be back to check it. Okay, we are ready to see what how our seitan turned out. After it has soaked in the spices. And I'm going to take it out. All right, it's still pretty hot. Oof. And remember, we're wanting to check on the texture. So this is pretty much a texture shot. I think we're going to have to cut that. <laughs> Ooh, it's pretty hot, y'all. <laughs> it did just come out. I think I'm going to let it rest for a moment. And cool down a little bit. And then I will be back. Okay, we have given this time to rest, so let's see what we got. Uh, I think maybe it did come out. More like ground crumbles. So more like ground beef. I was actually going for chicken, but like I said, I wasn't able to, I didn't follow, since I started it out as bread and not as actual seitan, um, I think that's why it came out more crumbly than flaky like chicken, because I was kind of going for that chicken. But... This can still be seasoned. Maybe add some peppers and onions and even make a taco. I'm proud of how it turned out though. Again, it looks like ground beef. Can you even see it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was turned out uh, on camera. You can even make a slider. Um, yeah, a taco, a slider. This is good. This is good. Uh, You can freeze it if you don't want to use it right now, which is probably what I'm going to do and have it another time. But I'm excited about how this turned out. This is great. Some ground crumbles. Like I said, you can, even if you have more of it, or even this would be great for a, like a pasta for one, um, a slider, um, of course, you would have to add a binder like aquafaba um, to make it into a slide, to turn it into a slider. But that's pretty good for first time. So we make ground crumbles. And again, you can season these. Um, although we did boil them in the broth or the brine, um, I would still season them again. Um, I would probably do tacos though, so put a good taco seasoning and add it to a shell with a little lettuce and cheese, vegan cheese of course. 
This is great for my first time making seitan. I'm actually very proud of this. So I hope that this was helpful. Um, again, in order to turn it into like that chicken texture, um, you want to start the recipe off the correct way with the correct measurements. Again, I started out with the measurements that I used to make bread. Um, so it is a little different. Um, you'll want to use more flour and a little bit more water because this was two cups of flour and one cup of water and ideally you should use probably at least a, um, four cups of flour and like one and a half cups of water so it should be um, it should turn out to be a different consistency and then of course you would get more uh, in the end um, but this was just um, an experiment to see um, and then once you um, wash it, you would then braid it <coughs> and stretch it, continue to stretch it, because the idea is to stretch it so that you get that meat texture and consistency. And then as you stretch it, um, then you would put it in a knot. You would just keep tying it in a knot until you can't tie it anymore. And then you would boil it um, for at least an hour. Um, and then usually it pulls apart and it looks like chicken. Um, but because I didn't start out with the right amount of flour and water in the very beginning, um, it did turn out a little different. And we now have crumbles instead of... Um, you can even saute this with a vegetable. Again, I would put out a little bit more seasoning. Um, but you can even see the color. Um, it, it looks like ground beef. Or even ground turkey or... Um, ground chicken whatever you know whatever you normally like and use so I'm proud of this as I said um, even though it didn't turn out like I said I was going for the chicken consistency but I'm okay with the ground beef consistency as well um, it can still be used to to make a, a dish um, and again, this was my first attempt at making seitan. So I am proud of how it turned out. Um, the ground beef consistency is fine. You can see it a little bit closer. Okay. Yep, so we have some crumbles here that we can use to make a dish. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching. Love you. Later.